Welcome back to The Final Whistle. I'm Drew Ziegler and I'm here with John Grant. John is back after his untimely sickness last week, but we are happy to have him back. Today we will talk about a new segment, including Wayne Hills Athletics, the NFL, and college basketball. First up, boys basketball. In their last game, they beat Lakeland 59-49 to and improved to a record of 3-4. and yeah, the freshman Justin Graves with 15 points. The team will look good one week, and then we gotta, we got to just get more uh, consistent. Yeah, Very impressive by the freshmen. And in girls basketball, they look like the team to beat. They beat DePaul 57-16 to and improved the record to 7-0. I mean, yeah, the team looks great right now. Shannon Ty with a double-double, almost a triple-double, with 10 points, 10 rebounds, and 6 assists. Their next upcoming game is at home against Passaic Valley. I mean, they look great right now. 7-0, and what more can you ask for from them? Yeah, and wrestling, a uh, huge win against St. Mary High School, 69-12, to and improved to a 6-2 and record. And next game, they play against Manchester Regional. And in hockey, their last game, they lost to Ramapo 5-2, five and, five and their record is now 4-6-1. and one. I mean, Josh, Josh Spungen is leading the hockey team with 18 points, and Michael Brogna is leading with the team with 12 goals. The hockey team's looking all right. Yeah, they could improve. Could they still have a lot yeah. of games left, and mm -hmm. hopefully they can win some more. Yeah. And when we come back, we'll talk about the NFL Week 18 games and preview the upcoming wild card round. Welcome back. Now we're going to talk about the Week 18 of the NFL. First off, Saturday night, Titans and Jaguars. Jaguars win the division. Close game, but Jaguars come out on top. Yeah, the Jaguars, it was a close game. Um, the Titans, you know, really stayed in there. That fumble, fumble, scoop and score really, you know, uh, determined the game. But, you know, this is just really disappointing for the Titans. I mean, they fired like four of their coordinators. I mean, go, to go on the, to start seven and three and then miss the playoffs, especially now that there's 17 playoffs, it's a really big disappointment for the Titans. You know, obviously injuries didn't help, but you can't lose seven straight games and lose the division. I mean, the Jaguars were burning hot and the Titans were ice cold. They started off 7-3, and three, like you said, and they finished 7-10. and 10. I mean, the, when the Jaguars are really hot and they had Trevor Lawrence coming in, had his best season yet, I expected the Jaguars to win this, and they did. I expected the Jaguars to win, but they didn't play a good game. Yeah, Their I defense agree. played well, but Trevor Lawrence did not look good at all. Missed a few wide-open touchdowns. And next, Patriots missed the playoffs when they lost to the Bills. And expected that they would lose to the Bills, but Dolphins took their playoff spot. I mean, what happened to Mac Jones last season? It's like he looks like a whole different quarterback from last season to this season. Maybe it's just the system, or maybe it's Matt Patricia's offense, but the Patriots do not look like a contender whatsoever, and Mac Jones does not look like a franchise quarterback right now. I, did, I, I expected the Bills to beat them, but I did not expect the Patriots to have like this crappy of a season. Yeah, I mean, the game was over once Hines took the uh, – kickoff return for the touch and I feel like you know they were just out of it I mean they hung in there for a little but the second uh, second half was all the bills this was definitely expected but like I kind of expected the Patriots to come out you know swinging a little I feel like they were playing a little conservative which you know when it's a must-win game against you know number two seed in the AFC you expect them to come out swinging and a really exciting game Joe Flacco <laughs> and Skylar Thompson two great quarterbacks Dolphins with a crushing win of 11 to 6 <laughs> Yeah, um, the Dolphins, I mean, they didn't really play that well, similar to the Jaguars. They didn't really, like, earn their spot, but they still won. So, you know, a win's a win. I mean, for Dolphins fans, you know, I don't, they probably don't care how they won, you know, just as long as they're in the playoffs. Um, you know, once they get uh, – if they get Tua back, um, I think, you know, the, uh, the Bills game will be definitely be closer than people think. The Dolphins have matched up well against the Bills this year. I mean, they beat them, and then they only lost by a, a field goal. So and and it was in snow. So I don't think the the weather conditions can be as big of a problem as people seem to make it like be. So I think I think the Bills. You know, I mean, I think the Dolphins coming into that game. I think they definitely have a, a shot. I give them this, uh, like a 40, 45 percent chance to win. Um, but with the Jets, I mean, you know, disappointing end to the season. Finish year one and seven. You know, after you know being in a prime position to make the playoffs. I feel like we're saying this, you know, week after week for the past month. I mean, this is just disappointing end to the season for the Jets. I mean, the Jets' offense couldn't score on a pee wee team right now. They 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 are really one of the worst offenses I've ever seen. The Jets, they're never going to change. I don't even want to sit here and talk about them because they are just such a disgrace. The Dolphins, with it all, it all matters if Tua is playing or not. Tua, he had his, his last time he played versus the Packers, he had a, once again another concussion. He threw three picks and they lost the game. But if Tua's healthy and like there mentally, 
they could they can beat the Bills, I think. Yeah, the Dolphins ride or die on Tua. I mean, he's the most important player on the team. He might not be the best, but he is the most important team. He he he's the reason why the Dolphins, you know, were on that five game winning streak. And you know, when he was hurt, you know, really showed when they went on that five game losing streak. His injury is serious, though. If you want him to have a long career, I think you don't play him. Yeah. Yeah. And what seemed like a meaningless game, Colts and Texans. Texans win on a last second two point conversion which gives the Bears the first pick. And Lovey Smith, right before he gets fired on Black Monday, he does that to the Texans. Yeah, I mean, you know, with the you know, circumstances you know, uh, aside, I mean, that was an amazing game. I mean, the Texans, you know, with, was it like fourth and 20, chuck it up and somehow get in. It. it was sort of like that dolphins Bengals game, you know, a few years back, you know, with that unbelievable win. But I, I think the Texans winning this game, you know, I think it's going to backfire on them. Now the Bears are definitely going to trade down. You know, maybe with the two pick, maybe they would keep it. But with the one pick, you know, they have a lot of leverage. They can get a lot of picks back. And then, you know, with their first round pick, they get back. They could get the best non-quarterback. With the Texans, I mean, they went from having, you know, whatever they want to have the first seat to now, you know, possibly a team, you know, getting the guy they wanted and have to settle with a Bryce Young or CJ Stroud, whichever one they prefer. So the Texans losing, I mean, winning this game, I think it's going to be very costly for them. I mean, maybe it won't. Maybe, you know, the team in front of them will take the, the quarterback that they don't really want. But, you know, this this could be a very costly win for them. I mean, you could never expect a team and a coaching staff to go out there with the intention to lose. So it's like when you say that it's going to be really costly for them, they're not going to go out there and try to lose. But the Colts, man, the, they're, they're, they're just embarrassing. Like, their quarterback situation is terrible. It's been terrible ever since Andrew Luck. Now they have a top five pick. They'll probably go grab a quarterback. I'm a Seattle fan, and the Texans winning that game dropped us from the third pick to the fifth pick. So the fifth pick is a pretty big difference from the third pick. So if I'm the now, now the Bears have the first pick, they can either take a generational defensive lineman like Will Anderson or uh, Carter from Georgia, or they can trade down for a massive haul and and so they could be in really good position because they already have Justin Fields. Yeah, I, I think they're going to trade down because they can get that Will Anderson or Jalen Carter guy with the fifth pick or the sixth pick. So, yeah, I, I definitely think the Bears are going to trade down. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see what they do. And your Seahawks make the playoffs, seven seed, barely beat the Rams. Can they make some noise? I mean, Geno Smith, man. I mean, first half of the season, he was playing lights out. Really started to slow down, though, towards the end of the season. Has been playing not great games a whole team we go into the playoffs first game of wild card weekend versus the 49ers i mean i love my seahawks but 49ers on a 10 game win streak and i mean you never know though you never know but i yeah, the Seahawks, you know, they definitely slowed down at the end of the year. But to get into the playoffs, you know, that's – that's, and it's still having the fifth overall pick, you know, what, what better can you ask for? You have a chance to win the Super Bowl and you have a top five pick. I think they're in a great position right now. If Geno Smith, you know, can play like this next season, they could definitely be contenders. I'm excited for that 49ers Seahawks game, though. You know, divisional, you know, opponents, rivals, you know, anything could happen, though. I mean, just for the Seahawks to make the playoffs in this season when everyone said they'll be a – bottom five team in the league. Geno Smith hasn't been a starter in seven years. To go out there and make the playoffs when not a soul on this entire earth thought that we were going to, it's, it's, it's just, even if we don't win, it's just this season means a lot. Yeah, something else um, most people might not believe, Geno Smith breaks the all-time passing record, passing yards record for the Seahawks, but they only got in because of the Lions beating the Packers on Sunday Night Football. Just what a win for the Lions. I mean, I love the Lions. I really do feel bad that they couldn't make the playoffs as well. But, I mean, Jared Goff really does seem like the guy in Detroit. And I, there's, the only thing I love more than the Seahawks being in the playoffs is seeing the Packers out of the playoffs. So it was just a really just a great night. Two wins in one night for a Seattle fan. And, I mean, what's better than that? Yeah, Jared Goff really improved this year. He really looked like you know, top 10, 12 quarterback in the league. The Packers lo missing the playoffs, though, I mean, going on that four-game winning streak just to lose, I mean, that's, that's got to be disappointing. Who knows if Aaron Rodgers is going to be back next year. He might retire. So the Packers losing again at home in front of the home crowd, it's just very disappointing. Yeah, I think the Lions are going to be a really good team next year. But a disappointing team, the Cardinals, just firing their coach Cliff Kingsbury, still paying him through 2027, though. 
Yeah, this was kind of expected for me, you know, uh, besides Lovey Smith, that was kind of ex unexpected, but Cliff Kingsbury, ever, I mean, he's had pretty good rosters, and he just hasn't been able to do anything with them. Like, last year, they had a good start, and then they just fell off a cliff, and then got destroyed in the playoffs. I think this is a good move for the Cardinals. You know, they, they were not going anywhere with Kingsbury. For Lovey Smith, I mean, I think it was a little surprising for me. I mean, it was his first year. He wasn't really given a great roster. They did, you know, have the second worst record in the NFL. But like, you got to start somewhere, you know, with that bad of a roster. I was a little shocked to see the Texans fire him. I wouldn't say I'm shocked with the Texans firing Levy Smith because the Texans organization is such a dumpster fire. The past two years, they've had one and done head coaches. What I, I just want to ask: What do they expect? Their roster is terrible. What coach is going to win more than three games with a roster that that's terrible? Cliff Kingsbury should have been out of there two years ago. He, 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 he's an idiot. And, I mean, the Cardinals have a good roster. They could have really made some noise in the playoffs if Cliff, if Cliff Kingsbury wasn't their head coach. Really against Cliff Kingsbury here, but I agree with you. I don't know what the Texans are expecting. They don't have anybody. But now the real deal, the playoffs coming around. First game, um, the, Jaguar, the Seahawks and the Niners. As we said, we think the Niners are going to win. But still... Just happy for the Seahawks to be in, in, in the playoffs. Very successful season. I mean, San Francisco, their quarterback, rookie, Mr. Irrelevant. Who knows? Maybe the moment's too big. But that San Francisco defense, though, defense wins championships. I just, I, I, I'm a Seattle fan. I love my Seahawks, but I got San Fran. Yeah, I agree. I, I have San Francisco. I don't think Brock Purdy is going to be you know, that big of a factor just because it's his first playoff game. I think they're really going to rely on the run game. Uh, and I, I still think they're going to win. I don't think the 49ers defense is going to give up like 30 points like they did to the Raiders. Yeah, Kyle Shanahan knows how to coach in these games. But they have all the pressure on them. The Seahawks have absolutely no pressure. So that mm -hmm. could change something. And next game, uh, Jaguars and Chargers. Who do you think is going to win? Uh, I got the I got the Chargers for this one. I mean, the Jaguars didn't play too well last week. Chargers were also, you know, on a pretty what are they five or six game winning streak before losing to the Broncos in a meaningless game. But you know, the Chargers have been playing pretty well as of late. I mean, you know, a month ago we weren't even sure if they were going to make the playoffs. You know, they were like, you know, inconsistent. Now they they creeped up all the way to the five seed. I I, I think Justin Herbert's going to win. Go into Jacksonville and get the win. It really just depends on what Jaguars we see. Are we going to see the Jaguars versus the Cowboys, or are we going to see the Jaguars from last week versus the Titans? If we see the Jaguars versus the Cowboys, they're winning. They're home. The offense played great. The defense played great. But if we see that team that we saw last game, I got the Chargers. Yeah. Mike Williams also hurt his back. Not sure if he's going to be playing. And um, the Jaguars, I think they're going to win this one. I'm going to have to disagree with you, James. Right. Chargers just played their starters and lost to the Broncos. Now we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back soon. Welcome back. Now we're going to get into the Dolphins and Bills game, as we did a little bit earlier, but who do you think is going to win? Um, I think that it really depends on if Tua plays or if he doesn't play. If Tua doesn't play, Skylar Thompson is not beating the Bills and winning you a playoff game. If Tua does play, then they have a way bigger chance than they would with Skylar Thompson. So right now I'm going to the Bills because it doesn't look like Tua's going to play. Um, if Tua plays, I, I, I think the Dolphins will win. Uh, I, th I think they'll shock the, the country. Obviously, if they don't, they'll lose. But I, I think if Tua plays, they'll win. Um, I don't think you're right about that. <laughs> I just think the Bills have this, and I just don't think that's going to happen. And next, Giants and Vikings could be an upset brewing. Hopefully, the Giants win. Let's go, Danny. Uh, I, I think non-biased. I think the Giants will win. I mean, last time they played them, they didn't have a Dory Jackson or Xavier McKinney. So I, I think if the offense shows up, I think I think I'm pretty confident they'll win. I got the Giants in an upset. I mean, the Vikings have shown that they are pretty big pretenders. They are not that team that they were in the start of the season and the Giants I mean I think that Dable is going to have these guys hyped up and ready to play and ready to go out there and I, I, I have a Giants upset here yeah Giants have a new culture this year Vikings also could be missing two O-linemen Brian O'Neill and Garrett Bradbury that would, those would be huge blows already and next Ravens and Bengals will Lamar be back from his knee injury he hasn't practiced in like over a month I think the Bengals are going to pull this out uh, I got Cincinnati. I mean, the the Ravens are 
even if the, even if Lamar does play, he's coming back from that knee injury. He's not going to be able to be that same player that he is in his first game back. The Bengals are hot right now. They're uh, in the Super Bowl last year. I got, I got Cincinnati. Um, if Lamar plays, I think it would be closer than you guys think it is. I still got the Bengals winning. He hasn't practiced in a month. If Lamar was practicing, you know, he was, you know, you know uh, playing and more prepared, I think the Ravens could win, but I still got the Bengals. And on Monday night, I think this is the hardest game to predict. Cowboys and Bucks, Bucks at home, and still Tom Brady in the playoffs. Who do you guys think is going to win? Uh, I got the Buccaneers. I think the Cowboys, you know, they didn't have a good week against the Commanders. But, I mean, the Cowboys did struggle uh, in the postseason. Also, it's Tom Brady. Who knows what's going to happen in the playoffs? He could, like, turn into his prime self. Who knows? But I think the Buccaneers are, are going to win. It would be a huge disappointment for the Cowboys. The Buccaneers cannot run the ball to save their lives. They're, they're, they went 8-9. and nine. They don't deserve to be in the playoffs. I got, I got Dallas just because – Almost 90% of the time when you lose a game like that on the, on the week before, you always, always win the next week. And Dallas just has the better roster, the better team, and especially the better head coach. Yeah, Dallas did not look good last week against the Commanders, though. Mm. And Brady, he hasn't been Brady this year. Yeah, but T Tampa Bay hasn't looked good all year. Yeah. I think I'm going to pick the Bucks in this one, though, at home. I just think they're going to win this one. When we come back, we will be joined by Steven Kubis to talk about college basketball. We're back, and now we're going to get into college basketball. First up, Purdue losing to Rutgers as when Purdue was the number one in the whole country. What are your thoughts on that game? I mean, I don't know. Last year they lost to Rutgers. This year, it seems like Rutgers has like a thing for when teams are like really good that they have to ruin their you know, greatness. But Rutgers is not that team. That's they're not a top twenty-five team. I mean, they're really good, but they're not top twenty-five. I think it's a really bad Big Ten loss for Purdue. Yeah, Rutgers is one of those teams they show up against good opponents, and then they really struggle against. Not so great ones. I mean, they just lost to Iowa, but I mean, Cam Spencer, what a shot! That was a difficult three back-to-back -back years to beat them. But Purdue, they did come back um, and beat Ohio State and Penn State next two games. So I'm not too worried about Purdue. You no, know, those are two quality wins. Those are two really good teams. So I think Purdue will be fine for now. Yeah, this is college basketball. Upsets are going to happen. They did bounce back with wins against Ohio State and Penn State. So they're still looking good. Mm -hmm. Top team. And UConn finally got their losses, a few, Xavier and Providence. But they're still a top team, and they should make a run in the tournament. Yeah, I think they're definitely still a top five to six team in the country. I mean, Xavier and Providence are two good teams. I mean, let's not forget, like, they're still really good. But uh, upsets are bound to happen. So UConn, if you, if, you want to get, if you want to lose now, you better lose now than in March. So I think UConn will still be fine. And I'm pretty confident they'll be fine when it comes to Selection Sunday. They'll probably be a one or two seed. Yeah, UConn, I'm not really sold on them still. I don't, I don't care what the rankings say, anything about that. I don't know. When it comes to conference play, every, every team struggles usually in conference yeah. play. There's no, like, there's not, you don't really see one team that dominates it. Like, UConn, I sort of think UConn's going to have their issue. They're going to lose a couple of games in their conference because they don't really play out of conference games anymore. It's now all conference. But if these teams are going to, like, fight all the time, then they might – Sometimes they're going to lose because of the, the way the games are always are. Yeah, conference play, they seem teams always play like harder and the games are better. But H there's no powerhouse right now, but Houston is number one in the rankings. Um, like, yeah, Houston, I mean, their conference is oh, it's, it's not that good, you know. I don't think their conference is like that good. So like, I don't think they'll have a problem like record-wise. The record will always look good, but like, I feel like if they like, threw in like a game against like one of the powerhouses, like they play like – like Kansas or like Tennessee type team, and they won that. I think that would prove their number one rankings because their conference isn't that strong. Uh, I think I think Houston, Purdue, and Kansas. I think those are definitely the three best teams in the country. I think you know they're on another level uh, compared to the rest of the field. I think we forget that Houston beat number two Virginia at the time at home. That's a really good win for them. And I, I think Purdue and Kansas. I mean, they haven't really showed any signs of weakness. Maybe Kansas a little, but I still think they're better than you know the rest of the field by a pretty good margin. I think those three teams are definitely you know the top teams in the country. Although they have been really good the past few years, they've never made the run. Still, you know, besides Kansas, yeah. Yeah. And Charleston, a surprise team, top twenty-five now. It's 
it's awesome. Just a cool team to be in top 25. Yeah, 15 and one. I mean, they had that early loss, but they've been on a five, six, seven game winning streak ever since. You know, uh, I love surprising teams. I mean, they make the games interesting. Hopefully, you know, in when it comes to you know March Madness, they versus the top team. You know, I I'd definitely be really excited. There definitely there might be a at large bid when it comes to Selection Sunday. So that's always good to see. You know, a smaller team. You know, come up and have big seasons. You know, Charleston's in a weird division no one really hears about. That's the reason why they have no noise usually. But like this is really cool seeing them. I know that they won't move up in rankings. Like they're they're gonna stay in like the top twenty five, like top twenty to twenty five because of the the schedule. Yeah. It's way too weak to move them up. But they're always. I think they're gonna be that. They're gonna be a great team, but they just can't like prove themselves more because of their yeah. schedule. Yeah, they're never gonna be that top team because of the conference they're in. But they are a top twenty five team now, and pe people should be taking them serious. There are a lot of teams rising and falling. Iowa State. TCU and Kansas State rising a lot in the rankings. Can they be a top team? I mean, yeah. I mean, that Big 12 uh, schedule could prove a lot of teams. I mean, I'm pretty sure Iowa State moved up at least like 10 spots in the rankings. They had big wins, you know. Same thing with like TCU, especially Kansas State. Big wins against like Texas. You know, like that proves you. That shows them a lot because Texas was like the sixth seed when they beat them. And like jumping from unranked to like 11 right behind Texas at 10. Which is like that's crazy like it's crazy yeah i think any of those teams could play well i mean they play in a good enough uh conference to you know rise up to that top 10 top five spot you know if they win their games they're, they're bound to move up i think there was a kansas state versus texas where it was like that crazy high scoring game i mean you're gonna need defense to win but like if you could put up was 116 points you could be anybody so i think any of those teams can know really be a good team uh, in conference play and as long as they don't stumble and lose consecutive games and don't go on losing streaks, they'll, they'll be fine. I think they'll be top 15, top 10 consistently throughout the year. Yeah, they can make some noise in the tournament. Yeah. And Duke, though, <laughs> falling a lot of spots, getting crushed by NC State. Are they the same team that they usually are? No, nah, they're not the same team. Without Coach K, I mean, it really shows. It is the first year for the new head coach, but they're definitely not the same. I mean, Coach K wouldn't get blown out by 20 points against NC State, so... No, I think they really need to pick it up soon before it's too late. You know, they're not title contenders anymore, which we haven't seen in you know a few years where Duke isn't a title contender. So, you know, they really need to pick up the game. Um, I don't think it's John. I don't think it's the coach's fault, John Schneider. I think he's a great coach. Been at Duke coaching staff for a while now. Now he's the head coach, obviously, because Coach K retired. I think Duke's problem is they don't have that one guy. Every year they have that one guy who puts up 20 plus a game, and they don't have that right now because they had the number one, two, number one and two player in the country come join. Uh, what Whitehead is finding his way to scoring now. He's been scoring 10 plus like every game the past like three games, which is good for them. They also have Derek Lively has been out too much, too much with injuries, but he's also a major impact. He gets a lot of boards and plays amazing defense. But you also got to remember Duke's in the hardest conference in college basketball. It's not going to be easy for them to go away and play like a Boston College and expect like a 20 point lead to win the game. But that's just not going to happen. Yeah, ACC is always tough, but they're still Duke and. I think they're still going to be a good yeah, team. You always have the expectations with Duke. I mean, I, it's really kind of uncharacteristic for them to not be dominant as they are, you know, in years past. So it's definitely surprising. But I'm not sure. I'm not really sure if they'll be able to come back and be, you know, that normal Duke self uh, later in the year. And that's going to do it for us this week. Thanks for watching the fi episode five of the final whistle. See you next week.